it seems everywhere that we look, somebody has the knowledge, the know-how, they have the remedy, they have the message, they are the ones who are the guide, they are the ones who are that prophet that can see, that knows, it's everywhere everywhere. Now, we also must keep in mind that Jesus Christ the Nazarene said, there shall be many to come in my name. Many to come in my name. But you also must realize and know that they are not Jesus Christ the Nazarene. So when someone tells you they have a secret remedy, they have the know-all, the how-to-all to God, that, that's not new. There is nothing new under the sun. We all must realize as humanity in order to find God, we as individuals must seek out the kingdom of God. When we individually seek out the kingdom of God, it goes something like this. God, I am calling on you. I am calling on you, God. God, I need to know you. God, I must discover who you are for myself, I hear many people, many people explaining you to me, but God, I want you to explain you to me. This is the pathway of finding God for yourself. It is great to congress with many people at an edifice. Most call that a temple or a church, but keep in mind at the end of it all, at the very end of it all, it will only be you and God. It will not be an edifice. It will not be a temple. It will not be a house. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. And there is a manuscript that God has, a ledger, a keep with all doings, sayings of all of us. These things truly exist. And God wants to know what you are doing to seek God. Because Jesus said, Seek and ye shall find. Now, what are we seeking? What is it that we are supposed to be seeking? What is it? We are supposed to be seeking diligently the kingdom of God. That is what we are supposed to be seeking. Not Anything else, because if we keep our minds stayed on what Jesus spoke, which was the living word, Jesus came, Jesus came down into the form of human flesh. That is God in human flesh. We must realize that we all were made in that image. We were made in that likeness of God. We were made in the image and likeness of them. Let us make them in our image and in our likeness. Both are in Genesis. God said, I will make them in my image and likeness. Let us make them in our image and likeness. We must realize what that is. The likeness and the image of God. The likeness and the image of God, Jesus Christ, 
and the Holy Spirit. For Jesus is the perfect, perfect creation of God, the perfect child of God. And Jesus came in human flesh and died and represented all of humanity. Now, if we stick together and understand that we are here to do the work of God, which is to bring peace, clarity here to earth, then who can stop us from getting to know God for ourself? But if we find the distractions more desirable than the diligent duties and doings that God requires. We have just stepped off of that straight and narrow path and we are on a wayward course which will lead us down a path, a road of idling. Many are on the path idling. Think on it. The news loves to give us idling information. The information that we get on news networks is idling. It's filled with fear. That is the number one headline on the news is fear. Whether it be man-made fear, whether it be a natural made fear by Mother Earth or any other form of fear, whether it be through animals, any form of fear that will top off the news. Economic fear, it doesn't matter. But if we understand and if we just believe that God is the creator of all things, as Jesus has said time and time and time again. Because we, this generation, you, you are part of the most prolific generation to ever grace humanity. Because you didn't have to see Jesus to hold on to enough faith to get it done today, to be here today. Many people gave up yesterday, but you did not. You are here today. That takes faith. A lot of people get this confused. They get it confused. They feel as if you have to be a Christian in order to get into heaven. They feel you have to practice some sort of religion to see God to get into heaven you must practice religion but I'm here to tell you religion is not necessary in order for you to get in the kingdom of God religion is not necessary for you to enter into what is rightfully yours, the kingdom of God. Now, what is necessary? The prerequisite to get into the kingdom of God is the acceptance of your ticket. At minute one. Admit one. This ticket will only let one in. You can't take anyone with you because the kingdom of God is on an individual yet collective basis. Because every knee shall bow. We all were made in the image, in the likeness, not outside of the image, not outside of the likeness of God but in it. So that means we are within God. God is within us. We have to really, truly understand as 
humanity that God is in us. Again, now let me go back to what I said about religion, and you do not need religion to get into heaven. The kingdom of God, because heaven and the kingdom of God actually are not the same. Hmm. Because Jesus said this, this earth shall pass away and the heaven too. This earth and this heaven shall pass away. What does that tell you? Why wow, everybody's in a rush to get to heaven. Mm, mm, mm. We are not listening. We are not paying attention to the street signs, to the parables, to what Jesus is telling us. This earth and this heaven shall pass away. Listen to the most prolific prayer ever spoken, ever spoken. No prayer is more powerful than this prayer. I don't care what any religious denomination has to say. No prayer is more powerful than the Lord's prayer because Jesus spoke those words and those words were delegated by God. Mm, mm, mm. If you say the Lord's prayer every day, if you say the Lord's prayer once with conviction and mean it, you mean it. You say it with veracity. You don't have to say it aloud. You can say it within your heart because where is God? In your heart and in your mind. You know, they say this many times at church. Oh, get up and say it loud. And motivational speakers, inspirational speakers say that. You must say it aloud. But I have a special needs child that can't walk, talk, sit, stand, nor crawl. So when you say that, you must understand there are individuals here on this earth that can't talk. That cannot speak aloud. We have to understand and be cautious and recognize all of humanity at its finest. So it's fine to say, oh, you need to say it aloud. You need to say it within your heart. You need to say it in your chest. You need to say it in your spirit. You need to say it in your mind. And you need not be conformed to this world, yet be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes, indeed. Mm, mm, mm. We are one race. God's race. The human race. Let us not be fooled by the illusion of the skin tonality. Let us not be fooled by the illusion of different languages, by different dialects, by how we speak, whether we speak with a East Coast accent, a West Coast accent, a Southern accent. Well, think about this. All of us in America, when we go to another country, they don't care about that. And you in another country, we don't care about the dialects either. Now, should we, knowing, knowing that God broke up the nations, mm. God broke up these nations. God separated the tongues to where one could not understand the next. We also must remember that this planet all was one. All these land masses that are broken apart and separated and now countries and now states and cities and we have all these borders, all of this land, all of it across the globe was one. It was Pangea. It was one form of land. One. That is how God had it in the beginning. Science has shown it. Science has proven it. And the word science means to know. Science, hence to know. Science means to know. That is the etymology of the word science. Now, I'm going to hop back to religion again. Why you don't need religion to get into the kingdom of God. I'm not talking about heaven. I mean beyond heaven. I mean to see the glory of God, your creator. Fear not. 
entrance point to the kingdom of God. Mm. Mm. Why everybody's in a rush to get to heaven. Religion. Do you truly know the etymology of the word religion? The word religion means to bind back again. Now, just think about that. Truly, truly think about that. Hmm, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. Wait. Let me, let me. The word religion means to bind back again, to bind. Picture these bracelets right here. To bind back again, that's what the word religion means. Mm, mm. Mm. Now, we know that Jesus came to break the yoke. He came to free us. I come that you may have life and that you may have your life more abundantly. You may have a more abundant life is what Jesus wants for us, what God wants for us. Now, let's also think about before Jesus walked this earth. Moses, same thing. Moses came to free, to unbind. We can fast forward through history and look at these wars and what different cultures have had to suffer. Think on it. Think on it. Hmm? And they were unbound to this day in American history. Cultures have been bound, bound for hundreds of years, bound. And in whatever country that you are currently in, you go through your country's history and you may find that too. Certain ethnicities are bound. Certain groups are bound. If they speak a certain language, they are bound. But we are one race, God's race, the human race, and we are equal to each other every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess this is why you don't need religion because religion is to bind you back again let's go further let's go a step further let's go further let's go further now religions have denominations right so now do you even know what the word denomination means this is serious do you know what the word denomination means this is very serious do you know what the word denomination means the word denomination means to break apart the names to break names apart so here it is the word religion means to bind back again. We're speaking of the etymology. We're not speaking of what all the definitions that change over time mean. We're speaking about the root stock of the word religion. Etymology. To bind back again. Denomination. To break apart. To unname. To break apart the names denomination so people practice religion they practice rebinding and they practice breaking apart names we have to understand what these words mean before you just go off and say i am this i am that think on it jesus never said in the Bible, as a matter of fact, the Bible never said you have to practice religion. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible doesn't say you have to be a Christian. Jesus never spoke those words. Jesus never spoke the words that you have to be a Christian. You have to practice religion, any religion, to get into heaven. He never said that. God has used people who have committed heinous crimes, heinous acts of crimes, 
have done things that are so immoral, it makes no sense. God has used all. So every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, as long as they accept the goodness of God. Now, hmm. So since there's a New Testament, what about before the New Testament? Hmm? Since we have to accept Jesus in order to get into heaven. Before that, it was the acceptance of God and it's still the acceptance of God, except God brought a teacher, Jesus, with emphasis. That is the only difference because it is the acceptance of God. People thought John the Baptist was crazy going around baptizing people, talking about he's speaking the word of God. They thought the same about Jesus. They really thought these things because they were speaking the word of God. They weren't practicing a religion. Jesus never said, I am a Christian. Jesus never spoke those words that I am a Christian. Jesus did not start the Christian religion. Jesus didn't start it. Jesus didn't start it. Not at all. Jesus came and spoke the word of God. That is it. And it's very important that you find God for yourself. Not just because of what someone else said to you. A relationship with God is not a holy, roly thing. It is just you having character. You Listening to the voice that is within you. That is the voice of God. When you hear the voice in you that says turn left and you turn left and you don't know why you turn left, but you turn left and you may never know why you turn left, but you turn left. But if you were to turn right, you would have gotten into some trouble. Something would have happened, but you turn left. And sometimes you do see why you made the reason or the choice you made. God shows you, hit your brakes, going to work on time today, don't be late, and you get there on time, and you find out that they are cutting and chopping people who are one minute late, and you got there on time, with time to spare, that is the voice of God, I don't care what anyone tells you, that is the voice of God, God is with you. God doesn't care about you practicing a religion. God cares about you living a good life, a healthy life. That is what God cares about. That's what God cares about. God cares about if you're going to be fruitful and if you're going to multiply. How are you being fruitful and how are you multiplying? If you see someone struggling, even if it's a co-worker that gets on your nerves and you help them out, that's being fruitful and multiplying. Because years later, that person might still remember that situation as they advance in their career. You may never know about it. It's not about us knowing. It's about God knowing what we are doing. And it's about us knowing God and knowing that God will do it. Again, it's not about us knowing what the results are. It's about God knowing what the results are. And it's about us knowing that God will do it. God will hold on and keep the promise. Just like the lady with the blood infirmity. They don't mention this lady's name in the Bible who has the blood infirmity. Just in case you're wondering what the lady's name who had the blood infirmity, her name was Veronica. That is the lady with the blood infirmity's name, Veronica. Yes, she touched the hem of the garment of Jesus Christ because she walked through the crowd, pushed, shoved, did everything she could to grab hold of the hem of the garment of Jesus Christ. Are you willing to grab the hem of the garment of Jesus Christ and suck everything out of Jesus? Everything you can pull out of Jesus, are you willing to do it? Jesus wants you to. That's what made Jesus stop. Now people just say, oh, I'm just going to, no. No. Veronica came with a relentlessly, relentless attitude and a focus and a drive and a vigor that would not be stopped, nor could it be contained because she was filled with God, filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the knowing that God 
operates through this vessel and I am going to get what is owed to me. I'm going to grab this garment of Jesus. Just how Jacob wrestled with God. Are you willing to wrestle with God? Not against God. But are you willing to wrestle with God? Are you willing to go round for round with God, giving it everything you have, showing God that you are not going to stop, that you are relentlessly relentless in your pursuit towards the kingdom of God? And God says, you know what? You got it. Don't let the promises of God go just because we don't see it now. You will see it. You will be part of the generation that sees the goodness and the blessing of God. But first, we will experience shock and awe. There will be a transference all across this globe from the higher up shifting 180 degrees. That means the lesser shall prevail. The meek shall inherit the earth. And how fortunate are we to be part of the first coming of this generation of the meek inheriting the earth. Mm, mm, mm. We have to see this. It's easy to listen to someone else who is telling you this is how you find God. This is what you need to do to get to God. I'm saying to you, you need to find God for yourself. The best way to find God for yourself is to ask God who you are. God, who are you to me? Who are you? Ask God. Question God. You're talking to someone who has all-knowing, who is omni-knowing. God will not be offended. It is not as if God didn't know you would ask that question. Every single word that I'm saying is unscripted. I don't have a script for any of this. God is speaking through me as a vessel. I am God's servant. This is God's account. That is what this is. And that is why I do what I do and say what I say. I just let God talk. I let God talk. And that's how we have to be in order to be humanity. The word sin, the wages of sin is death. Okay. First of all, we all will transition. We, we all have to leave this plane. So what does that even mean? The wages of sin is death. Okay. Well, we know we have to leave this plane, every single one of us, one day. Okay, now let's figure out the word sin. Do you know what the word sin means? All the Sundays in church I have spent, I have never heard a pastor break down the word sin. They just say, it's your sin, your sin, you go to hell, your sin is evil. The wages of sin is death. Oh, it's sin, 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 sin. I hear, I hear that. Man, sin is bad. Don't you sin? It's evil. It's sin. It's the devil's work is sin. But what does the word sin mean? Hmm. What does the word sin mean? Oh, here we go. I know what the word sin means. The etymology of the word sin. It means to make a mistake. Ooh, what? That's all the word sin means is to make a mistake. We make mistakes on a daily basis. Oh, everyone falls short of the glory of God. Everyone makes mistakes and falls short of the glory of God. So with that being said, since now we understand, we know the etymology for the word sin means to make a mistake. So we practice religion to bind back again, right? That's what the word religion, the etymology of the word religion to bind back again. The etymology of the word denomination to break apart into many names. And the word sin to make a mistake. So to bind back again, 
to break apart into many names to make a mistake. Wow. That sounds like God is saying something right there. That when God broke these words down and gave him a rootstock, gave him etymology, that's something you don't want to do. Why would you want? Why would you want to put yourself in a position to where you are bound back again? When Jesus came to break the yoke, Moses did the same. Other people have done the same in the 1940s, the 1960s, the 1800s, current day 20. 24 going into 2025 it's still happening now people are breaking the yoke setting people free humanity at its finest so why will we want to bind back again why will we want to break apart into many names when we are one race god's race the human race why we would we want to separate that and then why would we want to continuously harp on the mistakes that we make when everyone makes mistakes? How is it that we harp on the mistake of this one person because they're a celebrity and we let it go? But we harp on this mistake that the average person makes and beat them down. How is it? Or how is it that we hop on a celebrity and beat them down and hop on the average person and don't care? We can't do that. We have to treat everybody equal. We have to find a way in humanity, as humanity, to treat everyone the same, everyone equal. This is the way to the kingdom of God, finding God for yourself. Because when you find God for yourself, you will see God in every single individual you come in, into counter with. You will. You will understand that even people who do wrong, God knew they were going to do wrong. You may not understand. I may not understand, but God did. And hey, I lean on God's understanding, not the understanding of man, nor woman, nor my own self. I lean on God's understanding because God created all of this. Matter cannot be created nor destroyed. It can't. It can't be created nor destroyed. That's an example of God. There is, there, there is no way to replicate soil without using God's product. There is no way to replicate a rock without using something that God has made. There's nothing that can be made without something God has made. As much as we say these things are man-made, we had to use something from God in order to shape and construct it. From a car, to these beads I wear, everything is made by God. The lightning bolt that comes from the sky with electricity, a lightning bolt has fire and water in it. Now, isn't that something? And one does not put out the other. That's something. That is God at his finest. So if we learn how to seek and find God for ourselves, trust other, other individuals. If we do these things, we'll go far in life. And what does it mean to trust someone? What does it truly mean? When we are in our vehicles, we cut our blinker on. We trust that that individual is trying to get over. You don't have to know someone to trust them. If we're at the grocery store and someone is in front of us checking out, we trust that they're checking out. We don't have to know that person to know that they're in line to check out in front of us. So we get in that line too to check out behind them. We have to recognize that we are humanity, one race, God's race, the human race. And YouTube, I thank you for your time. I really do. Be blessed and stay phenomenal. And remember, remember this, plan strategically for your life or life will strategically plan for you. Now, I want to say a prayer. I must say a prayer. And this prayer is for the entire world, for humanity as a whole. Our Father, 
We come to you in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, our personal Lord and Savior, individually and collectively, God, by the way of the grace, the mercy, and the ever-loving powers of the Holy Spirit, Father. Father, we thank you right now, Father. Father, we thank you for the recognition of that we are one race, God's race, the human race, that we are humanity, Father. Father, let us understand and accept each other, Father. Father, let us understand that we can receive if we open our hands, Father. And when we do, let us understand, Father, we all breathe in the same air. We don't have to ask our hearts to beat. We don't have to ask our lungs to inhale and exhale. We don't have to say, brain, formulate a thought. We, we have these gifts of life naturally, God. Father, we ask that you would just come upon this entire world, Father, all across humanity and soften the hearts, Father, of all the world leaders, Father, and let them understand that they are human too, Father, and let them listen, Father. Graciously, Father, I ask that you would touch these major corporations, Father, their leaders, Father, and find a way, Father, only you know how, God, to touch them and let them know that these employees, that we deserve more, that we deserve to be respected to as well, Father. Father, let all the people, Father, who are supposedly doing your will, your work, and your method, Father, that are doing it wrong, Father, push them to the side, Father, and bring forth pure-hearted, no-guile leaders, Father. We need people to lead us, Father, in this time, Father. Because, God, you know 2025 will be a year filled with shock and awe, Father, and we need those leaders now to step forth, Father, and to guide us, Father, comfort us, Father, and show us the way, Father. For we are depending on you, God, as humanity, Father. This is a prayer of intercession, Father. This is a prayer, Father, intended for you, Father. For I know the words that I speak have anti-gravity properties, Father, and you hear them. They flow to you, Father. You are in me, outside of me, all around me, Father. And I ask that you would just protect and guide us as a whole in humanity, Father. This is not too much for you, God. You created everything. We thank you, Father. We hold fast, God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, our personal Lord and Savior, individually and collectively, God, by the way of the grace, the mercy, and the ever-loving powers of the Holy Spirit, Father, we recognize you here and now and give you praise, Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. God is with you. Keep your faith. Don't stop seeking, for you shall find God for yourself. And God will be so pleased to see you. Amen.